Hello, everyone. It's your principal, Miss Shanina. I'm here to read Chapter 2 of Simon B. Ryman. Uh, you already met the crew in Chapter 1. So we're going to go right into Chapter 2. I hope you get your books and follow along. This is an opportunity for us to read and learn together. Here we go. Chapter 2 of Simon B. Ryman with our One School, One Book initiative. If the West Side had a helicopter that could take people in the air to look down on the different neighborhoods, Creighton Park probably would look like a big old rectangle with a whole lot going on inside, like a shoebox with a bunch of toy cars, Legos, and pieces of broccoli in a little corner of it. And nobody really likes broccoli, so you wouldn't see any people in that part. I haven't left Creighton Park much since I was a little kid, and there's marks on my wall in our house to prove it, but that's okay because it feels like a whole world here. Next to the big mirror that dad put right by the front door, mom's, I call her that now sometimes, I'll stick, it'll stick one day, has been marking up the wall to keep track of everybody's heights. I once got into trouble when I drew a big S across my wall when I was learning how to write my name in preschool. But mom says when she does it, it's different. It helps you remember how far you've come, she says. But I've been at the same mark on the wall for almost three years. On my way to school, out the door, on my way out the door for school, I take a quick look at myself to make sure from the very first day, all the other kids see me as the new notorious D.O.G. In my new Chicago Bull t-shirt, black joggers with white stripes down the side, and matching Air Max, scrub clean after I scuffed them little bit on the way home last night. Hair looking good, check. New shoes on, fresh. Bulls t-shirt and my black pants on deck. First day, soon mm, I'm fly, that's a bet. The D-O-G is sick. Somebody call a vet. Woo, woo. He excited y'all for the first day of school. Have you ever been excited for the first day of school? Let's see what happens. Hurry up, Simon. The way you moving, you gonna be late for whatever fashion show you think you're going to be, baby. I gave moms a quick look out the corner of my eye. Okay, big man, let's go. She thinks this is a game. We live in Creighton uh, Crest Apartments and you can almost see my school from the sidewalk in front of my our building. Me and moms walk to the corner where the sign says Lucas Street and Loving Street. Right before the corner store, all the neighborhood kids go to for our candy, flaming Hots and Grape Pops. You all got a corner store on the way home from school? He does. Pay 17, keep following along. Mom walks past it ahead of me, so I won't ask for anything, ask her for anything, like she in a hurry. But I know me and Maria can probably get Miss Elsa to stop there after school. Past Chicago Corner, further down Lucas and Mr. Ray's Barbershop, where me, CJ, and Dad go to get a fresh cut every other Saturday. It usually closed on Monday, but today Mr. Ray is standing outside in the front of the window, spray painted, welcome back to school, waving at all of us as we walk by, even though we've seen him all summer. Mr. Ray seems just as excited as Maria for our first day. So the whole neighborhood out, they all walk into school, they wave into him. Mr. Ray has a sign that says, welcome back to school. It's exciting times. Do you remember the first day back to school? How was you feeling? Was you excited, scared, nervous? Think about it for a minute. Let's keep reading. Page 18, Mr. Barnes with his fresh cut. Watch out now. Old people always get weird about school and the first thing of every, on the first day of everything. Mom's turned around to me. 
mom, mom turns around to give me a look to make sure I'm not rude to him. Good morning, Mr. Ray. I say back through my teeth. <laughs> we pass the empty basketball court that will be full of high schoolers arguing and playing five on five when we get out later. Just then, the sidewalk starts turning left into the school parking lot, packed with teachers' cars, teachers directing everybody in and out. Suddenly, it feels like my heart is playing drums, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, on the inside of my chest, getting faster and faster, louder and louder in my ears. Mom turns around and smiles. Chill, moms. So he's getting nervous. He's getting anxious because he's walking up to the school and now he's really realizing it's his first day. Let's talk about what he's dealing with next. We're still on page 18. You all follow along. Some kids call our school Booger T. Washington, but not me. I figured since we spend five days a week in that place, might as well put a little respect on his name. Plus, I can't picture any famous rapper using the word blogger. Blogger? Maybe just maybe I say snot. But blogger? Oh, not. Definitely not. Don't kiss me in front of, of anybody, okay? I remind moms just before we reach the stairs to the front entry. Even though that's what she always does when she stops me off, when she drops me off anywhere. I don't need her blowing up my spot. It's kind of make me feel all fuzzy inside, but we can't be doing all that right now, all that now. This is fifth grade, feel me? So now that he's a fifth grader, he doesn't want his mom to be giving him a kiss. He's a little embarrassed. Have you ever felt embarrassed by your parents? Sure you have. Page 19, keep following along. I get it. Maybe I should pretend I'm not even your mom's anymore, she says with a laugh as she gives my hand a quick squeeze, squeeze which still feels kind of good. She looks a little sad when she laughs, but I got to be tough. Big new things are happening. But all of these other kids' mom probably still kiss them. I squeezed her hand back two times and hope she gets my message somewhere up there in mom's world. Once. We get to the playground outside of Booker T. Mom turns to me and give me a weird overhead high five that probably just as embarrassing as a hug. Have a good day, Simon. I love good. Don't forget to use that voice today, big guy, she says before leaving. So she was going to say she loved him, but he cut her off because, you know, he's getting older and he wants to show that he can do it his own because he's a big boy, right? All right, page 20, keep following along. Maria is always is already in the line for fifth graders and saved me a spot. I slunch against the tall brick school building looking down on me, keeping my eyes out for my other best friend, CJ, who always late, even on the important days like the first day of school. Simon! Earth to Simon. Maria always says stuff like that to me when she wants my attention. Whether it's about something important, chess club got moved to room 302, or something not so important. That new Drake song is fire. You heard it yet, Simon? What? What? I was saying, do you have all your stuff ready? I sharpened my pencil last night. I labeled all my different colored folder so I could be prepared. By failing to prepare, you're, you're preparing, to pay, preparing to fail. My trio has the written on the po poster in, her, in his office, she explains to her deepest, most serious voice. Oh, I did a bunch of multiplication flashcards last night before I went to bed because Camilla told me I better get ready for more math this year. What about you? This is when Maria turned and looked at me in the eye, all up in my face, like she too is one of our new teachers. She's big on eye contact. Looking all in his face like this. <laughs> uh, she's big on eye contact and gets really serious when she asks her, que asks her questions. She already doing the most. Mm, yeah, yep. 
I said, trying to ignore the pits that's forming in my stomach. More math? I hate math and flashcards. Who gets excited about more flashcards and memorizing numbers stuff? Math hard flashcards? No way, no thanks. All those quotes and sticky notes? Nope, 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 nope. Camelia is probably just trying to scare us like her and her friends always do. And Maria loves fancy quotes and school supplies make me feel kind of low. I guess I'm not really excited for school like she is. All right, y'all, we on page 22. So him and his friends are talking about what they needed to get prepared for for school. Page 22 says, I pulled my new all new black, um, book back tighter onto my um, back, squeezing the shoulder straps and felt the gold Black Panther pin I attached to it press against the inside of my hand. It already, already too heavy, filled with proof that mom overdid it again. I didn't do everything Maria did last night, but by the weight of this thing, I knew something in there will work. Then just then CJ runs up, breathing extra hard and wiping sweat off his forehead. So his friend CJ has arrived to school. Page 22, of course he ran all the way here. We all looked at one another and burst out laughing. CJ, short for Cordellus Jeremiah, is always a hilarious dude to look at when his loop-sided t-shirt and shorts right in his butt after an almost late morning school hustle. His first day? Look ain't no different than any other day. This morning, he rocking his favorite yellow Gucci tee, his dad's hand-me-down dark red basketball shorts, and mismatched Steven Universal socks inside of a pair of classy high-top chucks that he probably won't ever stop wearing until they're so old his feet rip through the soles and his toes are barking through the front. So listen, his CJ is a unique student, a unique friend. He's came up to the party the first day of school and he already running late and he got his own style. Page 23, keep following along. He made a steal, he made sure to steal the look with his signature hip hop fade and an extra crispy side part right above his left eyebrow. All right. My big homie CJ is cool as it get. So confident from his hair to his fit. An hilarious dude, funny down to his bones. I'm glad he's my friend, Calarius Jones. Woof, woof, I made it, CJ said, smiling and opening a medium-sized bag of flaming chips, flaming hot Cheetos. I pretty much, I'm pretty sure he loved them just as much as he loves mimic basketball, playing balls, and watching Saturday morning cartoon while FaceTiming us from the couch, leaning over a bowl of fruity oats. So his friend is eating chips in the morning. Do you eat chips in the morning? He eating hot flame and Cheetos this morning. Let's keep reading on page 23. His low, his low key probably loves eating flame and hot just as much as he loves old school Drake Rose, Derek Rose. So that means a lot. He pulls out a handful and stuffs them in his mouth all at once. You think he didn't have breakfast like he does every morning with his little sister, but we know this is just breakfast. Part two, y'all know you want some corns and chips, our breakfast food. Don't be looking me at, looking at me all funny. We crack up at his speech. We've heard a hunt, a hunt, we've heard a million times. So he's eating chips in the morning. His friends are laughing at him. Because CJ, his own person, he does what he wants to do as it relates to eating in the morning. I'm sure you all have ate things in the morning that you probably shouldn't be eating so early. Page 24, let's keep reading. I've been friends with CJ since I was really little. So basically, so, ba so we're basically cousins. That's how it is on the West Side. Anybody that's not your cousin can still be your cousin, even if they're known your family are long enough. So they're cousins. You all have friends and families that you've known a long time and they're not blood related, but they're still cousins because you're around each other for a long time. You probably have family relationships like that too. It's weird, but it's a thing. I even call his mom, Auntie Sharon, but that's 
Also, because I've had a big problem with my mom if I call a grown up just by their first names. And I don't want those problems. CJ, tall and big, so people think he's tough. But that's jokes on them because he's kind of like a teddy bear, actually. He loves watching Disney movies on top of his regular cartoon favorites with his little sister. But I ain't not snitching on him because I don't don't mind other people thinking CJ is big, bad, part of the notorious DOG squad. So he's saying his, his other people think CJ is tough. But really, CJ is just a normal kid who likes, car uh, who likes to watch cartoon and hang out with his sister. But if he's a part of the notorious DOG squad, they want people to think they're tough. Let's keep reading page 25. I want people to think that he's like my security or something, especially kids like Bobby Snesquiz. Hey, Simon, did you get any taller over the summer? They probably going to send you back to kindergarten for being so short. So I don't even know why you're in the fifth grade line, bro. Ooh, look at Bobby. So Bobby is this kid in school that's not nice. Sounds like he's picking on Simon. Let's keep reading. Oh, right here, page 25. Oh, I ain't lost my line. Here we go. Bobby teases jabbing his um, elbow into his friend's side, egging them on to laugh. Bobby was walked up with his friends, Justin Cook and Victoria, Victor G. And they both looked at me and laughed a little too hard, along with their leader. All three of them are dressed like basketball season. Bobby's in his usual extra long white tee, some um, vintage looking piston shorts, and what looks like hand-me-down all white Air Forces ones, even though all of them would be better talking stuff on the sideline. They're the kind of kids who makes a lot of noise wherever they go, even if they're not really saying anything anybody else wants to hear. So he's saying they kind of, they're like a little gang that's always messing with other people. Do you know people that mess with other people for no reason? Hmm. The bottom of page 25. Keep reading with me. I tried to think of something, anything to say back to Bobby, but the words just won't come out of my mouth. So here's it is. Bobby is being mean and he's talking down to Simon. He's talking about his height. Nobody likes to talk about other people's height. Remember in the beginning of the story, Simon was very upset about his height because for the last three years, he's been the same height. So now Bobby, a kid at the school, is picking on him. Have you ever been picked on? Hmm. Let's keep reading on page 26. We're almost done. See, I can't stop. See, I can't stand this stuff. Bobby always making things tough, picking on me because I'm small in the group. Wish I had the guts to stand up to his crew. I say some of this and probably some of that. That's that. It, then everyone would laugh at my funny clap back. But that ain't me. I'm the nice one. See, small guy, big heart, notorious D.O.G. Bringing, bringing. Now here's the bell. Old class school. Right. All right, so that was the end of chapter two. So in chapter two, we learned that he got to meet his friends for the first day. Then he has some troubles at the end with a guy named Bobby and a couple of his friends. Let's see what he's going to do in chapter three. How is he going to handle those challenges? What is school going to be like? What are some of the struggles that he's going to have? Can't wait for you all to keep reading and learning with Simon B. Ryman and how he's going to rhyme and solve his problems. Thanks for letting me read to you all. Bye-bye.